We are live, Jonathan. Sure, sure. Hello, everybody. Chag Sameach. I hope you can hear me and see us uh, well. Happy Pesach, happy Passover, and happy Easter for everyone. And thank you for joining us today for our second uh, Israel Connect speaker series webinar. I want to take this opportunity to thank our partners as well for helping us and promoting those events and trying to bring Israel uh, into uh, LA and the Pacific West Coast as well. Um, I'm Jonathan Barrell. I'm the Consul for Public Diplomacy and Culture here in our Consulate General of Israel in Los Angeles. And today uh, is my honor and my pleasure to present you with our guest speaker, Israel-born but L-based Tal Navarro. Tal Hi. is an international... Hi, Tal. Good to have you with us here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. I added some uh, slides, if you don't mind presenting you, but they are not moving up. Can you help me? Yeah. Great. Go for it. Okay. Is an international speaker, lifestyle blogger, TV persona, an influencer, and the owner and founder of Social Aid India Agency, specializing in building online presence, digital marketing strategy, content creation, and web promotions. And you can see a lot of those things that uh, we have to transition in now. For Tal, this is her bread and butter, working from home, how to advise her business, digital marketing, the things we're going to speak about, she's been doing it for years. Um, that was also part of the Beverly Hills uh, City Initiative, as you see, she's working closely with the mayor. She started as an entrepreneur in Israel and a pioneer in the digital marketing arena. Uh, actually, she started the first uh, digital marketing academy in Israel more than 10 years ago. She was also heading the digital marketing for the LA Fashion Week here in LA. So as you can understand, uh, or I hope, uh, you can understand that this uh, I'm going to have a great time and this webinar will be very useful and helpful. So for now, I encourage you to stay safe, stay at home. For now, we have to do our meetings virtually, but we do hope to get uh, to meet you all again face to face in one of our next events soon. Uh, I encourage you also to follow us on our social media, Israel in LA, on Facebook and Twitter, and to join us for the next events and webinars and uh, um, meetings that we are holding you online. Um, now, without further ado, I will pass the mic to Tal. You can, of course, ask her, send her questions during the webinar. She will try to answer them during the webinar or at the, the last part. Tal, the floor is yours. They're all yours. Have fun and Chag Sameach again. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And uh, it's really, really pleasure, pleasure to be here. I'm very excited to join this um, to, the, to, to represent you some of the things I've been living with for so many years uh, on my life. I've been doing it for more than uh, 14 years now. I've been working from home. I have a team that is spread all over everywhere. Um, I have a team that sits in Israel, in Malta, in Portugal, in Houston, and I've been working multi in multitasking on different uh, channels online since many, many years, and I'm very happy to be here and share with you all this information that I've been gathering uh, during the years. Um, today we're going to talk about a, a little bit about digitalizing uh, your life in the corona era and um, how to really work from home. I'll give you some tips on how to start your uh, brand online um, in as much as the time capacity will allow me. Um, and let's just dive into it. By the way, I see that we have uh, on the right side there is a place for questions. So if anyone has questions, he's welcome to write me down on the right side. I, I, I hope you see it. Everyone uh, can I see people from everywhere? Where are you from? You can write me down on the on the questions around, uh, uh, area. Maybe where are you from? So I'll know where you guys are from. And you can also say hello. There's a little handshake over there that you can uh, like wave to me and say hi. So you're all welcome to say hi right now. So I'll know that you're here and that you can hear me. Everyone can hear me well, right? You can uh, write down the questions and and comments on the question part, and I'd be happy to answer them with time. I see some people from uh, uh, Israel. I see some people from LA. This is wonderful. Um, Jackson Hall. Um, I have here Marina Del Rey also not too far. So that this is really great. This is so much fun. I'm really happy you guys joined us today. 
Um, and if someone said someone said here that he has no audio, check your uh, audio because everyone else has audio, right? You all hear me well, okay? Because if someone doesn't hear me well, then he should check this audio on the computer. It's, it's probably something uh, on his computer. So with no further ado, I'm gonna uh, jump into our presentation because we have a lot to cover today, and I wanna you know make sure that you get all the answers and all the for all your questions and uh, I'm gonna start right now. So first of all, I'm gonna talk a little bit about working from home, okay? It's it's something that we all have been forced to do starting now um, and suddenly it's overwhelming, you know, to really take our lives that we're used to go out and, and go to the office and see other people and work with other people. Suddenly to sit at home and be concentrated on the computer, it's not simple and I'm gonna give you a, a few like, um, tips on how to really deal with a new situation. Um, so first of all, I recommend you to create your own space, okay? Your own workspace, wherever you are in the house. Uh, it could be a little corner uh, in the, next to the kitchen. It could be um, your own office. It could be another room that you dedicate to it. Create a space where you know that this is your space, that everyone who lives in the house, the kids, the siblings, the whoever is with you, um, your husband or wife knows that this area is yours and keep it this way, dedicated to that. And that this way you will, well, even when you wake up in the morning, wake up, brush your teeth, wash your face, go to a shower, get dressed, put your jeans or your jacket on and go to your office. It could be even if it's, you know, in the living room, if it's in the, in the kitchen, wherever you find the spot, come dressed up as if you go to the office because that's going to make you mentally be dedicated to your work and your office. And, and this is a really great tip to do, not just go with your pajamas and, and sit there and because that, that's gonna be mentally much more, you will be much more dedicated to work this way. Make a task list. It's very important to, at the end of the day, to create a task list, okay? Because I mean, we know, you know that we have the calendar, okay? I, all of us, I also have a calendar that I'm working with like a Google calendar that I've been uploading uh, um, uh, different tasks on it and things that I have to do in meetings. But now I'm working with a list. I mean, I have I have like so many papers here. I don't know if you see it. Like I have lists and lists of stuff that I'm writing to myself down to make sure I don't forget them. You can do that on your computer. You can do that on a board on the wall, which I have here also in my little office that I created in my house. Uh, you can do it on a notepad, on your phone, or on a computer. Make sure you have a list of things that you know that tomorrow you're going to look at it and remember things that you need to do, okay? Schedule is very important. Very important to put yourself deadlines because when you go into the office, it's much easier because you have the deadline of people who work with your teamwork, um, your colleagues, your people around, and you, you know that you have time limit, that you have to go home to finish the day and go home, and, and you know, and that's it. But at home, you have no time limit. You can you know, work for hours and everything is much more messier. It's not really organized. So I would definitely recommend to use a schedule with deadlines for during the day. And then you know you're gonna be more productive and more focused on what you need to do. That's a very important thing. Think about your best hours. When are you most productive? Okay, when you are at the office, we know that nine to five, you, are, you should be productive as much as you can, you know, in the morning, but, and, and then afternoon, after lunch, as those are the hours that you're most productive. But now there's no office and you need to sit at home and you need to make sure that you are productive and you're supplying everything that you need to, to be done on time. Make sure you find your best hours. It's not always the same hours like at the office. Now you have the kids at home, you have your husband, or you have your wife, you have things that are going on in the house. So find your best hours. I can tell you my best hours are at night after I put my baby to sleep and around after 10 o'clock. Those are my best hours. I am, everything is quiet. It's peaceful. There's like no noise from outside. No one is bugging me on the phone. I know it's my time to work, to be productive. So think what's yours and try to stick on those hours for yourself. Try to take one step at a time. I know we are all multitaskers, okay? We all do everything. We all have so many things to do at, during the day. But at the end of the day, the reality is that human beings, for being human beings, are good in doing one thing at a time and taking one step at a time. Try not to do too many things at once. Try to focus on one thing at a time. 
And that's how you can manage your time much better than just doing a bunch of things all at the same time. Being flexible, it is very important. At the end of the day, you are in your house, you're at your home place, where you're, you know, you have your kid, maybe he doesn't feel well, maybe the neighbor is going to come by, maybe the mailman is going to knock your door. Well, not in the corona days probably, but, you know, usually there are a lot of distractions going on. You have to not to be too hard on yourself. Be flexible. Make sure you understand that even if you put yourself a deadline in your schedule, even if you are you want to achieve something today, it might not happen. I can tell you that for me, for example, I am, you know, I have a baby that I'm uh, I'm feeding and I have, you know, I have a company that I'm running and I'm trying to do so many things at once. I do webinars, I do, uh, I, I build courses. You know, we have online courses for different things and I'm trying to do everything together. It's not working everything together. And also I'm trying to be flexible because sometimes my kid's suddenly crying and I need to approach her. And sometimes, you know, I have to take care of something urgent with a client. So things are moving around. And that's very important not to be too hard on yourself and, and understand that this is okay, okay, to be flexible. Another important thing is clearing the table. At the end of the day, leave the table the way you would like to see it the day after. Okay, so leave it clean. Keep the notes, the list of the notes on your table to make sure you see it the day after and make sure that it's clear for, for next morning so it won't be messy and you won't start to look for everything. So these are the really important points about that, the working from home. I'm gonna give you also a few tools that you can work from home. I'm gonna take a look at the questions to see if there's something urgent that you wanna ask and I missed it. Um, and I see from Los Angeles, everyone hi everyone okay nothing too urgent and we're going to move forward so um we talked about the tools so i'm going to give you a few tools that are really going to help you with um managing your working from home first of all zoom well zoom everyone knows zoom you, you know it's uh, the, like the, the buzzword these days uh so i'm not going to go too much into it there's of course zoom whoever doesn't know what is it it's uh, the option to have a conversation with multiple people and create like conference calls. That's one. And then we have the PipeDrive. PipeDrive, it's an amazing CRM system that actually enables you to manage uh, and uh, to manage sales activities, to manage uh, clients, to monitor deals, to keep on track on everything you have. I've been using it for the past three years and it's been really, really useful and very, very um, organizing my, my time, my team and my clients. Skype. Skype has a limit of 50 people per call, but it's also a free uh, option of a free way to actually see and have a conversation with other people from all over the world and to whoever doesn't know that tool. Today we have Zoom, so I don't think Skype is even in the picture, but it's good to know that we have it. The QuickBook. I don't know if you ever heard of the QuickBook. The QuickBook is a small business accounting software program, which is really, really comfortable. It organizes your income and your expenses and your invoices, and you can pay your bills through it, and you can get reports, and you can learn to how to really keep a healthy financial small business. Um, and it, it just it's just super super comfortable, and I would definitely recommend using it if you are starting to work from home and for yourself, and also not for yourself, but just to know this tool. Google Drive, of course, it's um it's a uh, storage a free cloud storage that enables you to share information and enables you i'm sorry to share um different um uh, files and folders and things with your team or things with other people it doesn't not necessarily with the team if you don't have a team but it's a place where you can keep storage upload files and pictures and and documents, etc. It's really comfortable and you should play around with it if you haven't yet. Um, and another tool named Trello. Trello, it's a management system that enables you to really organize uh, your team as well in, in different uh, boards. So, and also not your team, just for yourself. You can create notes, you can create projects, you can create different um, time schedules, reminders, um, very, very comfortable uh, tool that I would definitely invite you to take a look and play play around with it. Um, 
And those are the really main tools that I would definitely recommend to play with from home when while you're working from home. Now, a lot of people are now doing the shifting, the moving from the, the world of offline to the world of online. And that's not a simple task. You know, a lot of people, it's uh, uh, technophobies, you know, and, and everything is really overwhelming. There Also, there are a lot of platforms out there. So there's, you know, like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and, and YouTube and LinkedIn and, and TikTok. And, and there is a mailing list that you can do and, and blogging and website and, um, and so, many, so many things that you have to deal with. So many things that you have to learn. And it's all in fast forward. We, 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 just, we have just been thrown into it. And everyone has to really start to get to know all those tools. So uh, what I can tell you is, first of all, don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot of information out there you can learn. I mean, we also teach this information and we also help people go through those uh, channels and understand and learn how to really build themselves on them. But before you do anything, before you upload any post, before you write any text on anything, you have to really build a strategy. You have to really understand how to even start. Don't just upload a picture and think, oh, that's going to bring me sales on Instagram or on Facebook. Or if I write that, then people are probably going to see it and they're going to come and, and they're going to probably buy stuff from me. No. You have to go step by step and build yourself from ground. And I'm going to go over with you on a few bullet points about building a strategy online um, that I hope that's going to help you. First thing, before anything you do, try to understand your identity, either even if you are a business or um, just a, a talent, a personality, or anything you want to cover and, and build online presence, you have to understand and learn about yourself. So what is your, what defines your brand? Okay, Who are you? What defines you? What are your core values? What are the things you believe in? What are the things that you are represent, uh, representing? Uh, what differentiates you from other brands? What is your unique proposition? What is the thing that you have that others don't have? And even if you do the same thing like everyone else, try to understand what's going to make you unique and out of, uh, out of, um, to, to, out of, uh, to be uh, shining out of everyone else. I'm sorry. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve while doing that? Um, what are your products? Is it a service? Is that a, a physical product? Is this something that you can uh, show physically? Or is it something that you are building around uh, a service or uh, a story that you have? The, the, the next thing you have to understand is uh, know your audience. Okay, Your audience are those people who are, you are approaching to, and they have their own language, they have their own uh, way of life. You have to learn their socioeconomic uh, or socio demographic situation. What's their age? What's their gender? Who, where did they go study? Where do they live? Um, you have to really put the face and the name behind the person. Try to create a, a persona. Give it a name. Give it a uh, shape. Uh, think about what's the psychological and lifestyle they have. What do they like to do? OK, try to really build who you are approaching to and what's going to make them engage. It is very important to make those people engage. So they will be uh, the ones who are going to reply to your posts. They're the ones who are going to reply to your emails. They're the ones who are going to read your blog posts. They're the ones who are going to uh, like and comment your your Instagram post, your Facebook post, they're the one who's going to connect with you on LinkedIn. So if you don't know who they are, you cannot know what to deliver them, what's your tone of voice. You have to declare or clarify what is your tone of voice, what kind of language are you speaking with them, okay? It is very, very important before you do anything else. So Seth Godin is one of my favorite persons ever. I don't know if you heard of Seth Godin, but Seth Godin is an author and a genius marketer who have wrote some of the most greatest marketing books. Um, and I really recommend you to get to know him. But he said, marketing is no longer about stuff you make. It's about the stories that you tell. 
you have to understand that at the end of the day, the world online, first of all, before online, the world built on stories. People love stories. When you bring them a story, they will be more attached and more connected to you than if you just put your product online or just advertise anything else. So at the end of the day, you want to take your brand or their product and wrap it with a story. Make sure you have an interesting story. Make sure you have something that's gonna make the people connect to you and feel. And when I say feel, really make them feel. For any content you upload online, you have to make them feel. You can make them be happy, make them smile with your post or with your content, make them sad, that's okay, make them cry, make them be emotional, make them be surprised, shocked, okay? Or you can even make them be upset. And those are all great emotions to express and great way to connect with your audience. But if you write something or you upload something and you didn't make you and in your audience or whoever read it didn't feel anything, you've lost it. And he's never going to come back. But it's the moment you got to touch his feelings, you got him. So this way you can keep on working with him. We can keep on giving him content and, and he's going to keep on reading you or going into other things that you represent. And it is very important to understand that. You have to remember that content is the king. And the more you create content, the better. But not only, you know, it's not only the volume, it's also the value, okay? The value of the content is very important. So the more you can create good content, it's great for two reasons. One, it is good for uh, Google, because Google tracks good content and, and the SEO or the search engine optimization brings you much higher on the search results and also for the people who are reading the content. So whenever you have good content out there, the people, the more people are reading it and, 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 and uh, consuming your, your content, the better your results are going to be on Google and the better, higher you'll be ranked. So therefore you have to create a story that will make people really connect to you and really uh, take you and create, make you uh, a content king. Okay, and so the more you make content, the better. Um, try to also be consistent across the platforms, which means that if you uploaded a picture on Instagram, for example, on my Instagram, I upload this picture, and then on LinkedIn, I uploaded this picture, and then on, uh, on the, my Facebook, I uploaded this picture on my Facebook page, and then on the on the Twitter, I uploaded uh, this picture, etc. So at the end of the day, you really want to um, try to be consistent with your um, with what you are representing. OK, now, first of all, before I move forward, I want to see let, let, let me take a, a look and see if there are questions that people are asking. OK, I'm going to first go over on some of the questions because I see that there are some questions here and I want to I want to give you as much answers as possible. Um, so I see someone is asking, um, um, what's the difference between PipeDrive and Trello? So PipeDrive lets you, gives you much more. Uh, PipeDrive gives you uh, many more uh, functions. You can in PipeDrive you can uh, create a lot of um, a lot of things you can create invoices you can create uh discussions you can uh, work with your team uh you can see what your team is doing you can have contacts lists um you can upload uh different uh, folders you have like an, an area for every client in this area you have he, all his documents and his pictures and his uh content and his information and his statistics about sales and and um this is like a journey that you can see about the client and it is very, uh, very interesting. Someone is asking here about Instagram. What kind of Instagram tools do you recommend to use? Um, well, when it comes to Instagram, there's a lot of things that can be done, okay? Instagram is a whole world um, of, of tools. I mean, Instagram has inside it a lot of tools. You have um, 
uh, features that enables you to, to bring greater exposure. You can create uh, polls, you can create questionnaires, you, you have a lot of, um, um, well, we have so many options and, and things to use inside Instagram that it's uh, it's something that there's a whole lesson about it. I mean, I would love to go over with you, but it's I think we won't have the time to do it. Let me see. We have more questions. Um, which one is better? Is it Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? Well, there's no better or not better at the end of the day. Each platform is a different platform. Remember that uh, social media platforms are not just distribution channels. So you cannot put on all of them the same, um, the same content. You have to be very dedicated with your content to each one of them. And they're very different. I cannot say that Instagram is better than Facebook or Facebook is better than Instagram because at the end of the day, they are all serving different purposes. Instagram has much more visuals in it, so you can um, see you can see um, you can see that it's more about pictures, more about videos, more about visual content. When we talk about Facebook, we're talking about a lot of texts, a lot of uh, places like communities uh, where people can ask questions and share share ideas and create uh, value in different different ways. So they're both very different. Twitter is also very different from the other two, of course. And it is very important to understand that uh, when you upload something on Facebook, you shouldn't be uploading on Instagram the same way exactly. You have to really adjust uh, or, or how can I say, it? Um, respect the context, okay? Every, it's like if I would go, if I would, like I'm sitting with you here and I'm speaking to all these 100 people who joined us the webinar today, and the way I'm speaking with you today will be different if I'll speak, if I'll sit on the beach with one of you and I'll sit with him face to face. My conversation will be different because it's a different place, it's a different area, it's a different time zone, it's a different approach and everything is different. So the same thing with social media. When you have different platforms, you need to approach it in a different way uh, on each one of those platforms. Um, I hope it answered your question. I have another question came up here, and it says, um, uh, where is it? Okay, I am, do you have tips how to brand ourselves as an authority to thigh food? Okay, well, <laughs> this is a very specific question, but how to create yourself as an authority, okay? First of all, as I said, you have to understand your your audience. Try to understand who are the people that you are approaching to. And then try to find really one or two platforms that you want to focus on. I wouldn't tell you take all the, the platforms and try, start, you know, working on them. Take one or two that you are going to do it the best way you can, not just on the way or like not very good. It has to look really good and professional. That's why I'm not saying you know, the more the merrier, but you, you, you shouldn't open different channels if you're not going to uh, consist, consistently take care of them, okay? So I would definitely, if you talk about food, I would definitely open it on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And by the way, Pinterest has become a really, really strong platform for everything that is visual. If you do Google today, a lot of pictures from Pinterest will come up because Pinterest works very well with Google. Um, there is a, if someone doesn't know what Pinterest is, is um, it's a platform that enables sharing pictures. And the good thing in, 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 in on boards, there are different boards that you can, uh, you know, divide to categories, etc. And there are different tools that uh, on Pinterest that enables you to reach very high on SEO on Google. So when you upload a picture, you can put uh, keywords and meta tagging and all kind of things that will bring you to the top. So I would definitely recommend whoever has something visual, make it um, on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Those are the real strongest platforms today for visuals. Um, and um, and I would, and I think that as, if you wanna be an authorita, like a, a, a persona in your arena, like you wanna be the leading in your area, it's something that you can do and you can, you should, and, and it's very good to do it. Well, what I wanted to say is this. Try to be 
uh, try to humanize your brand. So even if you are a, a, a company that does something like, uh, I don't know, um, a car company or a machine company or even food company, try to make it humanize. If we, with people are more respon responsive to people. So when they see a face, they will be much more responsive than if they see if then if it's just a logo. OK, so that's why when you will say you want to be um, you want to be in uh, someone who people who are. Um, well, let me get out of this uh, presentation. Do you see me now? Oh, no. Wait. You see me now? It's OK. OK. Someone said he doesn't see me. OK. So when I when when I, what I say is that uh, if you want to be like a, a persona, you have to understand your audience and give him the best from you and, and be humanized. So you, whenever you are in level of the eye with the with the audience and you give from your value and you give a good value, people will follow you. But sometimes when you are a company and you have a logo and you just put your products on, that's not something that people will follow because people, as I said, attach to stories. You have to create a story around you. You have to be really persistent with your story and let people um, and let people uh, get attached to you. Let and keep interactive. Very very important to be interactive. Very important to be um, um, you know to comment people, comment back to people when people are commenting you, like other people's posts. Be uh, be active. You need to understand something very important. The way the algorithm works, the algorithm of Instagram, uh, for sure, also in Facebook, but Instagram is something everyone has been uh, dealing with, is that the more you have engagement, the more your account will be ranked higher on Instagram account, which means you're going to appear more on search results and you're going to appear more on the main feed. So you want to create uh, as much as possible activity on your uh, account so you want a people you want people to comment you want people to uh, uh, like your your posts you want people to share your posts or you, to share your everything that you are doing over there it could be an IGTV it could be a lot of things that you are sharing and you want to make it active because the more you are act the more you are uh, interactive with your audience the higher you will be ranked by Instagram and Facebook and they will put you in the front line of the exposure, exposure, uh, the exposure on the explore page, and on the search results, etc. So it is very, very important to pay attention to that. Someone is writing here asking me uh, a website should he build it in Wix or in WordPress, um, and should he invest in uh, bringing more. Uh, like uh, uh, exposure, people write me in Hebrew, so I'm translating it. More exposure to Instagram and Facebook to the website. So at the end of the day, I, uh, me personally, I use WordPress. Okay, WordPress for me, it's the easiest. I am very comfortable with it. Wix is also great. I mean, a lot of people love Wix and they use it. I, I don't use Wix at all, but I, I love WordPress. And yes, you definitely. Definitely invest your time in bringing people from Instagram, Facebook to your website. The website is the core of your business. People think that if they open a Facebook or an Instagram and they don't have a website, that's fine. That's not fine, guys, because at the end of the day, we don't know what's going to be with Instagram and Facebook tomorrow. And if they're going to close down uh, your page, I mean, it happens a lot. A lot of people get hacked or their page has been uh, closed or they're, you know, there's they're very limit also options of uh, designing inside Facebook and Instagram. And I would definitely recommend to um, take that to take everything to your website, create a website inside doesn't have to be too complicated. It's not it's not it's really pretty simple to create a website. I would definitely recommend you don't do it yourself. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to build it on Wix or on WordPress. It's more complicated than that. Even I, I know how I'm teaching about, you know, uh, WordPress and about uh, um, all these, you know, the tools that they that there is in WordPress. But I'm not building websites, and I even my own website. I would give someone who is expert in that, and he will build it for me because everyone knows the best. What you know, everyone has his own thing that he knows best, and and just give it to someone expert. But don't skip the website. It's very very important. Uh, let me see. I have uh, another question here. 
um, building an online brand through social media. Um, uh, how do you best build your online brand through social media when your audience is older than 35? Older 35, that's great. Just don't be on TikTok too much. TikTok is for younger generation, even though now it's becoming uh, for elder because also the young people become old with, with the years. Um, but uh, audience that is older than 35 is everywhere. Is on interest, Instagram and, and uh, Facebook. There's more than 65% of the people who are older than 40 on Instagram. And, um, and, and there's no, I mean, there's no limit to what you can do there. And your audience is definitely over there. What else do I have here? My parents have fine jewelry booths in LA. They want to digitize it. Uh, is there a website we can recommend? Well, I can recommend you first of all to work on uh to they can work with etsy that's a great website ebay shopify if they want to build their website should like a shop online shopify is great for e-commerce um amazon today and ebay are also very strong um but it depends what they want to do i would definitely if i would be the, i would be them i would start building also their website and also before the, I mean, not before, with the website, I would definitely build other channels for sales. For example, I would definitely build their presence on Instagram, okay? That create a specific read for them, create a specific look and feel, uh, a specific specific way to, to deliver their message. It's very important before you start any platform, you have to build a strategy for the specific platform, okay? So if it's, for example, Instagram, they should definitely, first of all, define who is their audience, what the competition is doing, um, how the market looks like. They have to learn. Um, they have to learn all that before they start anything, and then they have to build the the main look and feel of the account, and also what content pillars they're gonna use. So let's say, I recommend. You know, a lot of times people think they put their products online and that's it, and that's a good thing. But no, I would definitely recommend to think of the values of your of your uh product so if you are uh like said you said like a jewelry booth then your value is probably going to be beauty profession um elegance um good energies uh, could be a lot of a lot of things that are could be your values and those are the things that you're going to create content with so it doesn't have to be only the 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 only the jewelries that you're going to wear but it could be also um um, you know, a, a woman a laughing, um, a woman uh, on getting dressed. If it's for men, then it's a man. Uh, it could be quotes. Could be a lot of content that I would definitely mix inside your greed. Greed. It's the, actually the, the look and the feel of your account. So I would mix in it different elements and not only the products. It's very very uh, important. Um, let's see if I have more interesting questions. Uh, what is the best way to build your followers? without buying followers. This is the like hundred million dollars, the million dollars, not hundred million dollars. This is the million dollars question. So building your audience on Instagram has been really not easy for the past few months, even almost a year now. Since uh, June 2019, Instagram changed their algorithm and, um, and they just closed like the valve for everyone. And it's very important and they made it very hard to get exposure and to get more followers. But there are a lot of ways to get followers. I am talking about it in a whole course, you know, that I have online. Um, but if you, I'll give you just just a few a few tips. There's no magic, first of all. It's a lot of work, okay? There's no like, I'm uploading a picture and I'm gonna get followers. This is not working like that. And it never have been, but never has been, but now it's even harder. So the main thing, main few things. First of all, create content that is unique for you and it's it looks good, very high end. Um, today there's so much content running out there that if your content will not look good, then it's nothing you do will help you. No one will follow you. It doesn't matter what you do. Another thing I would do is definitely synchronize between other channels. So like for example, when you have an email, you can put like a signature with your uh, Instagram in it. Uh, when you have uh, Facebook, you can share on your Facebook or Instagram, or you, you can go to groups and be involved. 
um, etc. So try to be, to synchronize between outside uh, LinkedIn. Also, it's a great platform to talk about your Instagram and put links for your Instagram in it uh, to all your connections, etc. Another thing is uh, upload, you know, upload content on the hours uh, that your audience is there. If you have uh, an account, you should have a business account. If you don't have a business account, you won't be able to see statistics. So I would definitely recommend everyone to change your account on Instagram to a business account and go to statistics. There is a if you go to uh, like the settings and you go to insights and inside the insights, you have an audience area and in the audience, you can see the hours and the days where your audience is more mostly active. And those are the times that you should upload content if you want to get more exposure to it and more more engagement on it. So that's very important. Another thing is using hashtags. Try not to use hashtags with millions of views. OK, when you go to search and you put on a hashtag, um, I hope I'm not going too deep into uh, details. I hope it's going to help everyone uh, else. But when you go to search, you can see you can put hashtag and then you can see drop down of different ideas and options and then you can see that there's hashtag like let's say you put hashtag love and you say and you see that the hashtag love has uh, 300 million of views okay you can see the number of views but it gives you other options for other things related to love like love you love emotions uh, i love her whatever and then you have uh, you can see the numbers of the views and you have to take a hashtag that has that have less than millions of views because if you use if you are using a too much general hashtag then it's going to appear on the it go, it is going to appear on the um on the I'm sorry your um, I was lost on on focus when you are taking a hashtag that is more than millions you are going to disappear in the hierarchic uh area of the hashtag okay because you have to take something that you might stay higher in the recent area much longer. I hope I'm clear because I cannot show you here. I'm just, uh, you know, giving an answer to this uh, specific question. Um, there are a lot of other tips to bring followers, you know, like uh, uh, create engagement and answer people. And um, and you have to use the features on the use the story, uh, um, make a call to action on your posts. A lot, a lot of things. So that's a whole class that I'm giving uh, whenever, whoever. And there's also on my website a lot of information about it. If I didn't get to answer all the question here, okay. Being social, um, being social sales-wise in the Corona area might be a perceived privilege or insensitive to the situation. Guys, this is Corona times, but. All of us needs to make money. That's okay to ask for money. Of course, you have to be sensitive to what's going on now, okay? But how to avoid backfire while still selling? Listen, everyone, everyone needs to, to, to bring food home, okay? We all need to make money. And it's okay to sell. You just have to be adjustable to the time, okay? So don't do hardcore sales like uh, try to be sensitive to the people but still you need to understand that people need to understand that you are making money you need to also make money and that's okay that's normal you can give discount you can give give away for free you can do these kind of things but you cannot not you cannot give everything for free please this is i see some people getting upset on on people who are selling are you serious what will people do not sell everyone gives free love in the in the world then you know it's 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 very important to sell and it's okay to sell okay whoever needed confirmation for that are strat are these strategy uh the strategies different on platforms you suggested yes on, on facebook instagram and twitter yes strategies are different on each one because there is a different way of uh, layout for if, every platform there's a different way of behaving there's a different way to um to manage every one of those uh, platforms and, and and there's a different audience in each one of them so and there's a different way of content of providing content on them so it it is a different strategies um th th those are definitely different strategies is it possible to get reply on this uh do access to cloud and to website the platform 
Okay, um, do we have time? Are we good with time? Let me see that I'm on time. Um, I have, I mean, I can talk for hours. I can answer all your questions. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I'm so happy to, to be here and answer. Let me see if we have more questions that are... Oh, Jonathan, yes. welcome back. <laughs> A voice from the, from the past. Yes, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, Tal. I'm great, and that was so interesting and informative. That was uh, amazing. Um, I think you know, while like listening to those questions, I think there's a lot of thirst for for uh, even more information, and maybe we sh we will do a a second webinar drilling down into the differences between the different uh, social uh, platforms and tools. What do you say about that? I'm in. I can talk all day about platforms and tools and and tactics. By the way, you see my screen, right, on the back? Yes. Just to, we'll see so now. on in my website, there's a lot of information, just to people to know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of articles about a lot of information. If you guys want to know and learn more, and you can go there as well. Okay, just just to let you know that um, and stay so, connected. Yeah, but we can do definitely with pleasure. I mean, would love to. Come whenever, Jonathan. Wherever you invite me, I'm coming. So. That's so. I'm 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 glad to hear that, and I'm sure our audience uh, enjoyed uh, this webinar. Uh, the questions were great, and I uh, really want to thank you for uh, taking the time and answering everything. I know it's a lot of uh, material, a lot of things to cover, but I think you uh, did an uh, outstanding work. So I want to thank, thank you. you. I want to thank everyone who was with us today. Uh, Chag Sameach again, happy Passover, happy Easter, and uh, I hope to see you here with us uh, next week on our next uh, speaker series webinar. Thank you, Tal. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, everyone, and feel free to ask me anything you want. I'm here to help. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye.